It is not known why powerful impressions of personality traits such as crazy or insane arise. A broken leg is something one recovers from, but mental illness allegedly endures forever. During the course of my interest in these questions of what is mental illness, um, you know, spurred on by my own experience, I encountered so many different people um, in my travels, Dr. Deborah Levy and Dr. Joseph Coyle, both of whom study genetics of schizophrenia. We were out to dinner after I did a reading, and they had mentioned this uh, one study called On Being Sane in Insane Places. And it was a study I had heard of somewhat. I had somewhat heard of this study before, kind of vaguely heard of this study. I went home that night and, and Googled it and found out uh, that it was this kind of amazing story. These eight people called pseudo-patients who went undercover in psychiatric hospitals across the country. All they did was present with uh, one symptom. I hear a voice that says thud, or I hear a voice that says empty. And just based on that symptom alone, all eight were diagnosed with serious mental illness. A broken leg does not threaten the observer, but a crazy schizophrenic? There is by now a host of evidence that attitudes towards the mentally ill are characterized by fear, hostility, aloofness, suspicion, and dread. The mentally ill are society's lepers. Once you were in this psychiatric population, you were discarded. Being kind of um, treated with a, in a detached manner, completely depersonalized, uh, made to feel less human. In fact, David Rosenhan described it as a kind of nether world. I, in my brief experience as a psychiatric patient, definitely felt those same experiences. Felt kind of othered, felt um, that the care was uh, detached, less sympathetic. How many people, one wonders, are sane but not recognized as such in our psychiatric institutions? How many patients might be sane outside the psychiatric hospital but seem insane in it? Not because craziness resides in them, as it were, but because they are responding to a bizarre setting. All these descriptions in this article really rang true for me. Dr. Deborah Levy suggested that maybe I was a kind of modern day pseudo patient. And I like that, um, that idea. That, that, that sounded really interesting to me. And I think she meant it just in the way that, you know, I appeared to have a psychiatric condition, but I really had a neurological one. There's one step further that I've taken it. And in fact, in that time when that study was conducted, which was in the 1970s, it was really a test of um, psychiatry. And I believe that my illness was in many ways a test of it today. The more I dug into uh, the study, uh, David's files and the pseudo patients, the more I realized that sometimes things that we think have definitive answers are really worth a second, more investigative look. Hachette.